Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and we have back with us for another great episode of Neighbor Speak. We have Reverend Dr. Michael Neighbors. Yes. Mm. <laughs> he's pastor <laughs> of my church, Second Baptist, here in Evanston, and he's also president of the NAACP North Shore here. And so he always brings a new perspective and helping us deal with what's going on on a spiritual plane, on a spiritual level. And um, we've gotten great feedback from actually all the neighbor speaks. Uh, we've been doing it for quite a while, took a break there, and then we picked back up because we were definitely in need of a word from mm -hmm. Pastor Neighbors during this uh, COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, lockdown. So today we're going to be talking about urgency because you mm -hmm. better believe mm -hmm. we are in an urgent state right now. Yeah. and Neighbor says, said, what do you want to talk about this week? He said, if we don't plan now, we are going to suffer and die later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh yeah, we get, we got to get, we got to talk about this. <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. So, so pastor, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe I know what you meant by that when you mm -hmm. said, this is what we're going to talk about today, yes. but, um, break it down to us. Uh, we are all ears during this time period. Definitely. Okay. Well, Malika, you know, what, what I meant to say, the first part of that, um, again, it's wonderful to be with you again this week. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be able to articulate and share, at least from my opinion and perspective, um, what is happening to people of color, to Black people during COVID-19. So when you ask me about a subject matter for today, the thought that came to mind was the urgency that, that uh, I'm not necessarily sure our people are experiencing and feeling the urgency in the way that they should. Mm -hmm. And then of course, a hyphen after that would be, um, if we do not plan now, we will suffer and die later. And I, I don't wanna be the bearer of bad news. I don't wanna be a prophet of doom, but I do wanna share that it is essential for um, African Americans around the United States to understand the nature of what we are facing, that it is not just um, a virus that is attacking us physically and biologically, uh, of which the majority of people who get it, you know, they overcome it. The majority of people are not dying from it, but they overcome it. But there are all of these other ancillary re realities that are connected to the virus that we have to be aware of that we're struggling against. So when I talk about how we will suffer and die, I'm not just talking about those who um, are afflicted with the disease and who may eventually die from it. I think that's going to be a smaller percentage, but I think it's our economy and our society that is crumbling around us as a result of, of the virus. That is what we have to be aware of. That is what is making us suffer right now, and we're going to suffer even greater. So let me share just a couple of things with you that I think is important because we're, we're talking now about Evanston. So in Evanston so far in 60201, we have 1,677 people who have been tested, 245 have tested positive. In 60202, um, another zip code that is filled with um, Evansonians, but also African Americans, there have been 1,452 have been tested and 265 had te have tested positive. So far, um, 514 altogether have tested positive and 17 of them are, um, have died. So we've got the physical reality of COVID-19 that we have to be aware of. Uh, that's making us suffer. If you don't get it, then it's highly likely somebody in your circle is going to get it. A member of your family, um, uh, a neighbor on your street, somebody in your neighborhood that you know, a member of your congregation, a member of the club that you that you go to. You know, all of this is we're all connected in, in that sense. So, so we're going to suffer physically. We're going to suffer emotionally and spiritually and mentally and all of that. But then there are these other bruising realities that we have to be aware of because we're going to suffer in these ways as well. And I'm talking specifically now about, um, I'm talking about the economy. Now, you, you heard just the other day that Northwestern um, has now furloughed 250 members of its staff. And so I will tell you that they are not all, you know, white collar executives that are being furloughed. The majority of them are not. The white collar um, folks at Northwestern are receiving a pay cut 
you know, the president announced a 20% pay cut for himself and 10% for, you know, his other administrators. But there are other people who are lower on the totem pole who have been furloughed from their positions. And not only that, but they are also suspending contributions to employees' retirement plans. So all, all of this is factoring in to people of color who look like you and I, barely able to make it already with the service jobs that they have over at their university and at Garrett Seminary and at any other place. So I think we're suffering as a result of that. And, and, and of course, why is Northwestern doing that? It is because they know they're facing a $90 million shortfall just for the year 2020. Now look at Loyola University, they're suffering um, a $50 million shortfall. Look at the University of Chicago, they're suffering a $220 million shortfall. That's just for the year 2020. It's not like when 2021 comes along, they're gonna be ready for 2021 and then make up for all of the shortfall of 2020. It's gonna carry over into the next year. And it's going to carry over into the year after that and the year after that. So some of those jobs that are closed down at these universities are going to be probably closed down permanently because they won't be able to make up that deficit in the next few years. Look at the, look at the public sector now. Look at other businesses in our community. They're suffering in the same way. So the jobs are going to be lost. And the jobs that are going to be lost are going to be affecting people that are just like you and I. And so we won't be able to pay our rent. We won't be able to pay our mortgage. We won't be able to pay our con note. We won't be able to, uh, we'll be gonna, gonna be struggling when it comes to food and scarcity of food. Now, who is that going to affect disproportionately black people and people of color? It's gonna affect African Americans. It's gonna affect, affect our, our Haitian brothers and sisters, our Jamaican brothers and sisters, Belize, and our Latinx brothers and sisters as well. We will suffer disproportionately more than any, anyone else. That's starting to happen right now. But guess what, Malika? Ain't nobody planning for it. It's almost like they're sweeping it under the rug. It's almost like they're saying, well, you know, when, you know, comes hell and high water, you know, we're all going to have to face the consequences and all of that. No, that's not right. It's not right because we're already struggling as a people even before COVID-19. So if we don't begin to put things in place right now, us, you and I, folks like us, then we are going to suffer and we are going to die a as a result of it. <laughs> Everything you are saying, I have been, been feeling. I actually wrote uh, an email to the city yesterday. I said, look, you know, I think it's great, you know, that you all are, you know, put that million dollars aside for uh, the homeless, those impacted by COVID-19. And it seems like the administration is taking care of the super wealthy. But what about all those people in the middle? Yes. You know, yeah. who, yeah. who aren't yeah. homeless and who yeah. aren't financially well off. Right. So right. what do they get? You know, with a million dollars, what is 75,000 people in Evanston? Yeah. With a million dollars, you could have taken, you know, paid their rent, their mortgage, some groceries, some utilities for about three months. Everybody. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Help help them along. What yeah. what can we what can we do to get prepared? Yeah. I mean, it seems a little late. We're already mm -hmm. kind of behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, already. What yeah. can we do to catch up to be prepared? Mm -hmm. Well, that's when we, that's where we come in with this plan. When I said that if we don't plan now, we will suffer and die later. We've got to have a plan. So the, the plan is, first of all, to make sure that our community and folks who are not a part of the, the, the Black community understand that we are not the ones responsible for um, our suffering from COVID-19. A lot of times what they want to do is they want to put it right on the black community. They want to say, well, you're not practicing social distancing or you're not doing this or you're not doing that. No, there have been pre-existing conditions that have made us more vulnerable as a people than any other people in the United States of America. Those pre-existing conditions include um, living in crowded conditions. Because we, because we live in masses of people and so do our Latinx brothers and sisters. I don't wanna, I don't wanna throw them off. We work in essential fields. And when you work in essential fields, that makes yourself more vulnerable to populations that you're actually working with. We have us always struggled with access to healthcare. We've always struggled with 
um, chronic health conditions. And, and so the answer is a, a, a sort of luminous, uh, a, a, but a full kind of proposal where, where the solution to these issues for black people is going to be a revision of our entire um, economic status as black people. It's not like we just want black people to take more tests so they'll be less vulnerable to COVID-19. Well, no, that's not, going, that's not going to settle all of these other issues that we're facing. It's not just a health piece. We've got to revise our whole economic reality as, as, as people of color in, in Evanston and everywhere, for that matter, in the United States. So when you talk about what the solution is, a part of the solution is making sure that we will have an opportunity to not only fight against COVID-19, but as we're going through this and moving forward, that we have um, job opportunities that are available that we have opportunities um, for us to be able to, um, to create um, what I would call, um, I, I would say neighborhood coalitions, where people in every neighborhood are sort of looking out for each other, but they're also being supplied resources to make that happen. You were talking about, you know, why wouldn't the city give us money to help us pay our rent and to pay our mortgage and all of that? Well, guess what? You know, what's gonna happen is the city doesn't have money for that, right? I don't think the city has money for, for, that, for that to happen. And further, when we look at a larger picture, I don't think the United States has money to pay the rent and pay the mortgage of everybody that's going to have to need for it to happen. So I think what has to happen, and here's the preacher in me, okay? Now, you, 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 you're going you're gonna to be amazed at this idea, but I'm going to say it anyway. There is something in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that is called the year of Jubilee. It's called the year of Jubilee. It's found, first of all, in Leviticus chapter 25. And it was a proposal by Moses as he visioned out for the people once they crossed the Jordan and went into their promised land, how they would be able to survive econom economically, you know, for generation after generation. And his plan was, was simply this. Every, every six years, the people were to, to work, to till the soil and all of that sort of thing. And on the seventh year, they were supposed to rest. They weren't supposed to till the soil. And you know, that's very wise. I'm not a farmer, but you know, that gives the, the soil the time to get the proper nutrients to get back up and running for your planting. So every seventh year, something was supposed to happen, right? So they were supposed to take it easy, not work, take it easy, and, and, and do what they were going to do in order for the land to be replenished and for the spirit of the people to be replenished. Now, every 50th year, the year was called the year of Jubilee. So, so these cycles were going to go in seven cycles, right? Seven year cycles. In the 50th year, guess what Moses told the people they were supposed to do? They were supposed to forgive all of the debt that people had acquired in those previous 49 years. Every single person that was owed something was supposed to forgive that debt. And a brand new slate was supposed to happen in the year of Jubilee, in the 50th year. I am telling you that the only way that America is going to recover from this kind of crash that we are experiencing right now and the only way that communities like Evanston are going to be able to survive is however long this COVID-19 takes place. Once we come out of it, whatever debt has been acquired is going to have to be forgiven. And we're going to have to have a brand new slate. Now, you know, that's some radical talk. That's some amazing talk. It ain't capitalism, right? <laughs> you know, but it is Christian. And it is, and, and it is from our Judeo-Christian faith. It is believing that the ability to forgive debt is not um, giving us a, a handout to those who are struggling, but it's helping our brothers and sisters who have less and are less fortunate to get back on their feet and to continue on the journey. It's going to take some radical effort like that in order for people who are suffering right now to be able to move forward. And who among us, like you and I, would say that that's a bad idea? That's a beautiful idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That is a beautiful. So, so, so what do we got to do to get that, get support behind yeah. that? What do we got to do? 
Well, we're going to have to talk about it. We're going to have to, and, and for me, you know, you know, the United States always says that they're a Christian nation, right? You know, the Bible and all of that, even though people pick and choose whatever they want in the Bible to justify however they believe in whatever they're doing. You know, we've got these crazy nutcases going to state capitals right now, thumping their Bible right on their chest, you know, as if they are, you know, the most amazing Christians in the world. And they're nothing more than racist and divisionist and all of that. We know all of that, right? But this piece, this piece which is in the Old Testament, is something to me that is so sound during the kind of pandemic that we're experiencing. Because if we don't do that, then what we're going to have as a result of this pandemic is we're going to have a permanent underclass of people in the United States that will never be able to get out of their particular predicament. They will be a permanent underclass of working people working for a minority of people who are very wealthy. And, uh, and, that, and that's not going to cut it. That's not going to make it. I don't want to live in a nation like that. You don't want to live in a nation like that. In order to forgive the debt, I think that houses of worship, I think that um, the Congressional Black Caucus, I think that folks like the NAACP and the Urban League, need to look at this year of Jubilee, need to attach it to the 2020 pandemic that we're experiencing, and they need to say the only way that we can distribute a sort of economic justice for the marginal people that have suffered in this country is by introducing this year of Jubilee and forcing, compelling banks and lending institutions to forgive that debt so that people have a clean state a clean um, slate, rather, once this thing gets started in 2021. That would be awesome. Do you think this, this, is, this could be part of, the? you know, everyone's trying to figure out how uh, to spend the money for reparations. Would, would that tie into reparations, forgiving all of our debts yeah. and letting us start over? Yeah, I, I don't I don't think so. And and let me tell you why. And 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 and, and I want to be very clear here. I think rep reparations is a different conversation from this because when you talk about clearing debt, right? Now you're talking about the American people. We're not just talking about blacks who suffered through 240 years of institutional slavery and another 100 years of Jim Crow and then all of the inequities since then. We're talking about everybody that's going to be suffering as a result of this pandemic. What I'm saying is that blacks will disproportionately be suffering because of these pre-existing conditions. But when that year of Jubilee comes, that's going to have to be for all people. That's going to have to be for um, our Native American American brothers and sisters, our Latinx brothers and sisters, and our white brothers and sisters who are also accruing debt and not able to pay um, their expenses like everybody else. When it comes to reparations, we're specifically talking about Black people who have suffered long before anybody ever coined coronavirus, long before COVID-19. Right. That injustice still has to be pinpointed and taken care of. So I view them as being two different realities the clearing of debt is going to have to um, happen, but black people are still going to need opportunities to buy their first homes because of the redlining that occurred for so long. Black people are still going to need additional resources because of the inequities that exist in um, education and healthcare and that sort of thing. So, so I, I view them as being two different uh, uh, realities. Yeah, but that's a good point that you make. That you make. So the so the year of the jubilee. Am I yeah. saying that correctly? Yeah, you're saying it right now. It sounds good. <laughs> I, like, I like that. We got to, yeah. So when are these talks going to take place so everybody can, we got to do a Zoom and just have like a million people on. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, well Malika, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't think I'm the only one thinking of this, but I just... I I just thought of that for this conversation this afternoon. So, this, so, so it's coming fresh out of my lips and into your ears right now for Evanston. Well, people that's know gonna put some people. That's going to put some some stuff on people's mind. Like, yeah, that's a that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That is the solution right there. It, it is. It, and you know, we're going to have to do that whether we want to do it or not, because the only other option that we have, if we don't clear the debt of all of the people that are suffering now because of COVID-19, if we don't clear that out of the way, that debt is going to go into the next 50 years. Hmm. And, the, and the hatred and the angst 
that is going to be built in the generations that have not yet been born because they are born into the debt of their parents and their grandparents, that, that is going to make for great instability in our nation. So we've got to do it. We've got to make it happen. And, 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 and we've got to create a clear and concise strategy for making it happen. It goes back to the plan again. We have to be strategic in bringing voices together. And I think, because I, this is my pastor's hat, I think that it is a religious perspective. It is, a, we're talking about, we're talking about a, a religious sort of objective and, and a goal that is not just from the Judeo-Christian heritage, but it's, to me, it's from every religion. I, I believe that our brothers and sisters who are Muslim, our brothers and sisters who are Hindu and Buddhist and all of that, nobody would be remiss, it seems to me, except those people that stand to benefit from the massive suffering of poor people. Mm -hmm. They will be totally opposed to the year of Jubilee. Yep, and I ain't thinking about them. I'm thinking right. about the, I'm thinking about us. <laughs> My right. mom. <laughs> to fear their life if they stand up and oppose something like this where people can have a clean slate to start over. Yeah. After all this destruction, disaster, yeah. disease, mm -hmm. virus. Yeah. Just clear the slate. Give yeah. everybody just a, a new beginning and let's yeah. just start over. Yeah. Who would oppose that? Yeah. The, again, <laughs> rich, rich, rich white folks would oppose it. Mm. Yeah, re Republicans would oppose it. And let me tell you why. Because if we do that, the, the, the folks who are benefiting from this um, system of inequity, uh, it's going to affect their income. It's going to affect their salaries, mm. right? See, our suffering and our debt is allowing people to live in mansions, <laughs> you know, and to drive and to drive uh, Maybox, you know, and, and 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 all of that craziness. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about people that pull themselves up by their own bootstraps and have their own thing going. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about other folks that are somehow intricately tied into this thing that we call the world market exchange system, right? It benefits the, the top lit tier of people in the world uh, at the expense of the masses of people who are very poor. So, so, so to articulate this, even though you, you think it's as clear, you know, a clear a, a picture as, as one can imagine, it, it is actually a disruption into the way things are. And I think that what has to happen now because of the urgency of the times, we've got to disrupt the way things are right now because we've got a quacky nutcase um, president uh, down in the United States right now who's going to end up killing everybody by, by forcing people back to work because they're more interested in the profit than they are in the people. They're more interested in money than they're interested in mamas and daddies. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so folks like us, we're not for that. We're, we're, we're not in favor of that. Right. We're in favor of helping the least and the lowest, the left out, those who are downtrodden and, and unlucky, and that's the masses of people in the United States. So I hope more than ever, Malika, that this neighbor speaks or whatever you want to call it, this particular video that you're doing, I hope that it catches on. And I really do hope that it goes viral and that hundreds of thousands of people will begin to think, what is a year of Jubilee and what would that look like in the United States of America in 2020? I like it. Well, I'm definitely going to pass it on and ask everyone to share it because I think it's a it's a solution. It's more than just a great concept, great idea. It's a solution. Nobody's really been coming up with solutions right. to what we're experiencing, what we've been experiencing, and definitely what we're all experiencing right now, everybody. Yes, indeed. Yes, that indeed. Been a solution. That is a solution. All right. Thank you, Malika. We did it together. We did it together. This conversation right here. You you bring out the best in me, sister. <laughs> All right. Thank you so okay. much, Pastor Neighbors. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Malika. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. All right, you guys. This has been Malika of Evanston Live TV, and you heard it the year of the Jubilee, where everybody just gets a clean start, a new slate to just start over. That's a solution to what's going on right now. I that's the best solution I have heard yet. Absolutely. A new start for everybody. Oh, yeah, we have to pass this on, you all. So 
I'm going to get going. We've got some more amazing guests coming up. And you all stay tuned next week for more Neighbor Speaks. You know, I told you he always brings a new perspective. And today he brought a solution to, I think, everybody's issues right now. So you all, please stay safe out there. As always, I end every video now. Keep you six, six foot distant, uh, six feet distance <laughs> from everybody. Uh, wash your hands. Definitely wear your mask. Take your shoes off at your door. Do not track COVID-19 into your house. And just be safe, you all. Be very conscious of what's going on. Uh, stay engaged to find out what's going on. Because right now, everything, all these decisions being made are affecting your life, your livelihood, as well as your health. You know, stay engaged, please, please, please. So this is Malika Evanston Live TV, and you all stay tuned. We got to learn more about this year of the Jubilee, but we can all just get a fresh start. So you all be sure to pass this video on. All right. Have a great day.